Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mike, and I am an alcoholic. Hi, Mike. We love you, Mike. Lots and lots and lots. Thank you. I can't say I love all of you, but I'll try to love as many of you as I can. Um, This is uh, anonymity in the digital age. Um, Dave Diamond and I have talked a little bit before Um, we we came to this panel here, and um, you know, just trying to figure out who's doing what. I mean, obviously, a lot of the focus of anonymity is very Facebook related. But there's certainly um, things beyond that, you know, throughout the Internet. And um, I'm going to focus on a few of those other things as well. Um, it is an honor to be here. That is not a line that is blowing smoke up your ass or fake gratitude or anything. Um, the call was put out to ask for panelists. And I put my name in there because I have a huge ego and I think I'm important. Um, and they called me back and said, we're going to put you on such and such panel. Which meant somebody thinks I have something worthy to say. And that's, um, there, there's great ego in that and there's great humility in that. Great ego in that somebody thinks I have something to say. Well, it's obvious. But as someone who, who, you know, like many of us struggle with all kinds of social interaction, alienating people and things like that, especially with the opinions that I have, um, somebody thought enough of me to think that my little piece of message for Ikipa was worth hearing. And it's, um, it's, it, it's really touching because, you know, it's, um, you mean somebody likes me and somebody thinks not only just likes me and, and, and wants to put me on here because I'm their friend or whatever else, but they thought they, they like me and they like what I had to say. And, um, I, I really, it, it really touches me. It really does down to business. Um, I'll give you a little bit of my history related to the, the my service history related to this. I've, um, I've been involved with AA on the internet since I got into sobriety. Um, my first real AA internet interaction was after I came into the program, uh, was AA chat on something called IRC. It's a, um, it's a chat that is not owned by any one entity. It's, um, you know, like Facebook is owned by Facebook. AOL is owned by AOL. There's no one owner for that. It's a, it's like the web, but in chat form. And, um, I found an AA channel there and connected with a lot of people. Um, I actually met one of those people at Florida, Icky Power, who was on the host committee there in 2004, 2004, not floor. Um, and I met another one, uh, from New Jersey, we went to Cirque Pot together last year. And so, um, it really allowed me to, especially in after hours moments, 2 a.m. when I'm not feeling so hot, give me somebody to talk to and people to talk to from around the world. I had a chance. Another interaction I had was a gentleman from England who happened to be visiting, um, New York where I uh, was from before, at the same time that our area convention was going on. So we connected, met up, and we went up to the uh, to the Southeast New York convention together. It was a great time, and his story was a great story that this guy, through just some random, you know, chat connection on the internet, wound up being a uh, being able to attend there. It was it was really nice. Um, as far as positions go, I've um, I've done three websites that are um, for a various AA entities. Uh, the first one was for, uh, Putnam County, New York. Um, the way the service structure works in, the, uh, Southeast New York, the New York City greater area is that we have groups, we have districts, we have counties, and then the area. We throw an additional layer of service in there, uh, just based on, an, on our geography and the number of people that we're dealing with. So, um, I was the, um, Putnam County Internet Chair. Uh, my sponsor created the website. I refined it. And um, I helped to maintain that, basically giving out uh, meeting information, contact information, service um, committee information, things of that nature, things that people needed that weren't always available locally. And to me, that's what the, you know, big um, benefit of the Internet for Alcoholics Anonymous is, is that it can give people from around the country and around the world access to this information. I'm sure many of us registered online, for example, for this conference. I know I did. You know, nobody wants to pull out checkbooks anymore. Uh, my second position was doing being the outreach chair for the uh, New England Conference of Young People in AA. 
uh, NECUPA 19 in Connecticut. I, did, I went up through the website for that as well. And uh, finally, last year, I was the web chair for uh, the 52nd International Conference of Young People in AA. Um, uh, quite the job, tremendous honor. And, um, you know, I think it was due to a lot of that and helping this committee here transition their website that they got to know about me and decided to throw me on here. Is, um, if, uh, if there's one thing I can tell you about these internet committees and website committees and such is that you don't have to be technically knowledgeable to serve well in that committee. I would say less than half of the job of the web committee or internet committee is about the actual technical side of it, putting, you know, coding and, 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 and things like that. A lot of the, what we do is decisions. Um, being that we're responsible, the way I saw what I did at Ikipa is I was the digital voice of the committee. It was my job to take the committee's conscience and the committee's voice and put it into digital form so that was most easily accessed by, you know, the country around the world, AA Nation, for lack of better words. And it's, uh, there's a great responsibility in that. Um, you know, it's, um, we have to make sure what we do is, is kosher with the 36 principles. And, uh, you know, that takes some vetting out. Um, as we've heard in AA, the good is the enemy of the best. Sometimes things are a great idea until you realize that, hey, you're breaking a major tradition here. You know, you, m you might be getting great information out, but you're putting somebody's, you know, full name and phone number all over the web and, and basically identifying them as a, uh, as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous. And, and we can have our views about anonymity and, and, and what's good and what's not and things like that. You know, to me, there, there is a certain current belief of how we should, how we, how we do practice anonymity here in AA. And I tried and followed that. Um, it's not only just my opinion, and I try to form a committee and, and talk to other people because if left to my own devices, I'll do what I want. Um, and it's, um, but it's, it's more what the committee wanted and what AA wants for them, you know, in, in, in a certain aspect. Um, One of the, um, you know, when, when you're dealing with Ikipa, you have to have contacts. You have to have people to connect to. And there's just this balance that you have to find. One of, one of the hardest things I've learned about doing all this Internet stuff in Alcoholics Anonymous is people don't want to do it in, 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 on certain administrative tasks and things like that. Um, we were, I, I was responsible for making sure that everybody on the committee had, a, um, had an Internet a email address. Every email address ended with ik, at ikipahost.org, which is the domain for the host committee. You know, if you go to ikipahost.org, that is something that's owned by advisory, passed to each host committee for the purpose of putting up their website. So every one of my committee had an email address. Now, no one wants to check the second email address and have to send out for the second email address. They, you know, it's easy to just, you know, open up your email program or, or whatever, Gmail, whatever else, you know, write your email and send it out. Now, if your email address has your full name in it, there's certainly an anonymity concern there, um, you know, and, and, and that was a constant battle. And it stinks because you become somebody that people don't like too much when you're constantly reminding them, telling them this and this and that, and, and being the, you know, the nagging mom about, you know, you need to use your Ikipa host address. I, I talked about this in almost every host committee meeting that we had, and I told him there's two reasons why this is absolutely important that you use this. The first one is anonymity. If your full name, like many of us, is in your email address, you were giving out your full name, and basically it's it's somewhat acknowledged that if you're a member of this committee, you're an alcoholic. It's not, it's not always exactly the case. We certainly had our Al Anon division, many of whom are not alcoholics. Um, you know, it, it becomes there's always this technical, you know, just because I'm in the committee, I'm not a member of AA or I'm not an alcoholic, versus this accepted or implied or or somewhat inferred idea. That if this is coming from an AA committee, chances are you're probably going to be considered an alcoholic and a member of AA, rather whether you are or not. Um, people are just going to infer and assume that, especially people not within the program. If you're dealing with institutions and things like that, people just assume that. So um, you know it, it, that's going to happen. So it was important for me to do that. The other reason I wanted to make sure that happened was the spirit of rotation. If you have to rotate out of your position. We don't want your personal address being associated with that and that and whatever outside contact continuing to contact you instead of the next person doing that job. So, 
you know, and, and that's tough. It's, it's, it's tough to enforce. And, um, there's a lot of things about anonymity in AA that are tough to enforce. When I started seeing digital cameras pop up all over the place, and I heard a little laugh and a couple of nods here and there, I was the AA police. Put down that camera. Stop taking pictures. I don't care if this isn't a meeting. It's an AA, you know, you, if it was a dance. You don't, this is an AA event. You shouldn't be taking pictures here. You make no friends doing that. <laughs> it, it, it's a tough position. It, you, you alienate yourself. You get angry. Being the AA police all the time makes you a very angry man, woman, or whatever else. And I stopped after a while. Basically, and, 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 and I'll, I'm somebody who's posted a few pictures myself of pictures at AA events and tagged people on Facebook. I've, I've committed the crime. I'm sorry, Dave. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm careful about that. I'm careful not to identify how, uh, how I identify things. I never, almost never use the last three letters of this conference when I post about it because you can't really Google icy. You know, you'll come up with something completely different. Um, but you know, it, it, and things like that, but it's, um, you know, it's that constant battle that we fight, you know, fight, you know, first it was the digital cameras and, and, and then, the, you know, the Facebook and, and, and people posting. One of the major, you know, people say we've been fighting anonymity, you know, all this time. I think the big difference with the digital age is that the Internet has made all of us publishers on a forum that anybody can access. And when you have social media sites, uh, Facebook, MySpace, whatever else, um, it gives you even more of a forum to broadcast it to a wider range of people, um, and, 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 and certainly when you're doing friends and things like that in networks, um, people you know, some of who know you're in AA, some who do not, and what you can be um, have information posted about you without your consent and passed along to your connections, your trusted connections, and that's um, it's a scary thing. You know, um, so far I've been pretty safe with that. I've had to, in the time that I've been on pace, Facebook, I've had to delete one post uh, from somebody who made a very direct in, in, inference about my uh, membership in AA and my sobriety. You know, I, I try and be careful about censorship. I'm not a fan of it for the most part. Um, but it's it, it's just that battle, and 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 the battle occurs on the administrative side when you're doing websites and things like that. Um, you have to give information for people to contact. You can't just say, you know, you can't just give an email address and be done with it. One of the requirements that our, um, the advisory committee had of the host committee in New York was that when we do event flyers, we have to put phone numbers in there. Um, that's a, that's something that they directed. And, and it's understandable. There's, there's a great function and great value in that. But at the other end, how do you remain anonymous when your name and number are on a public accessing entity where there are so many, you know, systems out there designed to comb the internet, grab this information, and be sold to other people or whatever else, and basically, you know, or, or be posted publicly or archived for internet search in the future and things like that. How do you maintain that an anonymity? Um, and that was the discussion I had with my committee and with the host committee. Um, you know, how do we fulfill that requirement? That at the same time, I kept a very strict policy about anonymity. Uh, about mentioning the name of companies on, on the website I designed. And, um, you know, we decided that for the image that was on the site, you know, if you go to, you know, uh, Ikipaho slash events for last year and you saw the, 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 uh, the image of the flyer and the information, the phone number wasn't on there. To get the, to get, to see the actual phone number, you had to click on the image and download the PDF in order to get it. It wasn't perfect, but it was a compromise that we made. Um, you know, I, I was very, um, when we tried to do maps and parking and things like that, I had, I sat down for three multi-hour sessions with our transportation coordinator about parking in New York, which is a very, very big deal, like it is here in San Francisco. Because a lot of people around this country don't realize when you park in New York, it can cost you $300 for the weekend. Um, and so, you know, I was intent on not using... Um, corporate, you know, um, if we did a Google Maps and did that thing, I wasn't going to have the Google logo on there. It's not my job to make them money. It's not my job to promote them. Is there an implied affiliation or anything like that? And all this stuff and all these decisions is it, just a balancing act, whether uh, 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 of using tools that are out there for free, um, passing forth critical information, 
You know, is the mention of this hotel on our Ricky Pa website, is that affiliation? Is that endorsement? Is it more than just the information of where it is? Um, I don't know. I think all our, our traditions are open to interpretation. Somebody actually disagreed with me that, on that one. So, you know, I think uh, I, I almost wanted him to sit on some of my committees and find out how much interpretation there can be. And, um, and to a certain level, and it's unfortunate, you know, you almost have to agree to a certain breaking of the traditions. It's a volatile statement I just made. And it's tough. It's, it, it, it's, it's strenuous. You know, the, what, what do we have to do to try and pass that information along at the same time, protect our traditions and what we're supposed to do? And, um, you know, if you go to the bottom, you know, one of the things that, that I completely disagree with on the advisory site, ikipod.org, if you go to the bottom, there's an absolute endorsement of where that site is hosted. Um, I've kept my mouth shut because I don't need to be the A police on everything until now anyway. <laughs> You know, and, and you look for things like that. Um, you know, it's um, so it's, it's this constant political evaluation game. I almost feel like I'm a, I'm a member of like some government committee evaluating these things and going forth from there. You know, to try and make sure we, you know, we're being anonymous, that we're not endorsing, that we're not affiliating or otherwise. And we have to ask ourselves, what is affiliate? You know, how how far do we have to enforce that? How far do we have to enforce? You know, um, the lack of endorsement or not anonymity and things like that. Now, there are some AA entities that are out there that tell you the, that the Internet for AA is completely bad. I had a conversation, I think, last year or two years ago with a delegate who was infuriated that their minutes were sent out through email because a lot, a lot of people will take those minutes, post them on their district website, and not comb through them and take out names first. Um, whether it be full names, first name, last initial, phone numbers, things of that nature. And I understand that. Um, in, in, the, in, in the age of the Internet, we are the ones that have to maintain that, us, us individuals, us service committee members. Some people will care more than others. Some people will be more knowledgeable than others. There's a lot of people who are doing good things and just don't know that you have to do those things and don't realize the extent at which, just because... Chances are only AA people are going to access your district website. Doesn't mean that that's always the case. We have to try and be as absolute as we can about that. And it's, um, you know, we have to inform people. I think that's what this panel is about. I, I did another panel earlier in the year in Boulder, Colorado, with almost the exact same name. And it's uh, uh, the reason we had that panel is so that people can be informed about stuff they may not know. I mean, that's why we do pretty much everything here at Equipaz is help inform. And, and continue to inform people who may not know. And it's, um, you know, we need, we need to work at that and, and, and be diligent and vigilant about making sure that that's protected. I think it's a losing battle. I really do. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate but there, there's the, the principle of what we do in AA and all these traditions and, 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 and principles and such. And then there's reality. Reality is there's going to be a lot of photographs coming out of here being put on people's, um, you know, social media accounts, um, on, on their online albums and people tagged and written about and people will use the term Mickey Pa and use the term AA and Alcoholics Anonymous and whatever else. And, you know, the Internet likes to associate with different websites with each other and it'll interact behind the scenes. And, you know, it's tough. It's... um you know, we can go to one angle and say, you know, what's the big deal? You know, do we really need to be anonymous anyway? The other angle is, um, you know, what if my cousin just happens to fall upon this one page because he's best friends with my sister's dog's boyfriend or whatever else, and they just happen to see that? I mean, you know, there's certain levels of, I think, to the extreme of which you can go, which, you know, well, keep my name off the Internet forever because someone might see it. <laughs> and it's, um, yes, it is possible Likely is a different story. Um, we can't, I don't know if we can do things to protect from any possible way. I mean, my name was written down on a piece of paper uh, at, at an AA convention. That could probably be led, lead for me to being outed. You know, the program being online could possibly lead to me being outed. I, I, I kind of look at all of them as uh, what percentage is this a risk? Um, what, you know, how is it beneficial? More, I, I worry more about the risk than, than, than the benefit because uh, we do a lot of things that are for the good 
of the program and wind up not working out well at all. So, you know, and that's, you know, you have to do a certain level of risk management when you do a, you know, AA on the internet, AA websites, things of that nature. And it's, um, it's hard. It's hard work. But, you know, if you're informed and, and you talk to other people and you have a committee, if you're a web chair or an internet chair or designing websites for AA events you know, or AA entities, have a committee. Talk to other people. I can't stress that enough. Um, because sometimes your idea may not be the best, or sometimes your idea proves to be no function at all because you, you, you secured it and you've policed it within an inch of its life and it doesn't do anything. Um, Equipa has a Facebook group. Uh, it was created by a, um, by a, a member of the Atlantic Committee. I have no idea how much she consulted the rest of them. She might have done it just to, you know, show, help people, uh, communicate. Uh, it was passed off to the New York Host Committee. It was my response. The Host Committee officially adopted that group, and it was my responsibility to maintain that group and make sure that you know things on there were kosher. You know, you know, you, we all know about the this, the public versus private versus secret um, permissions. Now, here was another question. That's a secret group, so basically it's like Fight Club. You know, you don't know unless you're in it. Um, Facebook owns all that content. What are they doing with it? My name's on there. My full name is on there. Being associated with the group, the 53rd Ikipa, and, you know, when the 54th takes it over, and, you know, the 21, there's 2,100 members in there. You know, so, um, you know, I, I personally, I think that's okay. I don't see Facebook doing majorly, you know, they might sell my information to advertisers. I don't think they're publishing it out to, you know, local rehabs or newspapers or whatnot. I don't know how, I don't know if there's enough of a risk of my anonymity being fully out there for me to worry about it too much. And the benefit of that Facebook group has been tremendous. Um, you know, we, we use an outside entity to maintain our, if you get an email from Ikipa, uh, 53rd Ikipa, that's done through an outside service. And, um, do they own that information? What do they do with that information? You know, things like that. So you always have to ask yourself these questions. And we could secure us, you know, I, I work for a government lab, um, and safety is not our number one priority. Because if safety was our number one priority, we would never leave our beds. And I, that, that was made very clear to me my first day on the job, that you have to balance out safety with productivity, with, with environment, and all these other things. And that's really what we're doing in AA with this whole Internet thing of ours. Um, we're balancing all those things out. And, um, you know, I don't really mention AA on the Internet. Um, if any of you are, are my Facebook friends, when I have my anniversary, I celebrate X years of sobriety with Billy the Money Man and Bobby the Ass Doctor. Now, if you could figure out what that is, you're probably in the program. If you don't know what I'm talking about, fine, I've remained anonymous. Um, and I'll, I'll make mention of this thing of ours and things like that. I'll, I'll, I'll get all cutesy with that. So I, I can talk about certain things about my activity in AA and whatnot. I've told people I've gone to San Francisco. Most of them don't know why. Um, so it's always just this, this risk management, this um, constant evaluation of what we're doing. And an understanding that you may not like it, it may be against the traditions, but if people are going to do it anyway, that's what you have to try and find and manage. And, um, and, and work with the reality and people's, you know, what they're going to do. And, um, you know, we would, my committee was the first committee to use the ikipahost.org domain for emails. Uh, we weren't the first person to have it available to us, but we were the first person to use it. I was very, very strict about that. And thankfully, I had the backing of my committee. When minutes were sent out, they were sent out only to your ikipahost.org emails. Um, if you didn't use that, you didn't find out the minutes. And you didn't find out what was going on. And I'll tell you, the ikipah minutes are very important. And I think I'm about out of time. I want to thank everybody for being here. I hope you learned something out of that. Please feel free to come up to me uh, anytime throughout the weekend and talk more. I'm usually wearing a cow hat. Um, and I'm just very appreciative that you're here, that I'm here, that we're all here. And uh, thanks. Thank Let's welcome our second speaker, Diamond S. from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Hi, my name is Diamond. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Diamond. Love you, Diamond. Love you, Diamond. Lots, 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 lots. lots. Oh, bunches. Bunches. 
Thank you. Yay. That was exciting. That's the first time that's happened for me. So I'm going to start a timer because I can talk forever. Okay. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I am on the, uh, actually how I got, um, I think actually how all of us got on this panel was through that uh, super secret icky paw thing, if I'm not mistaken. That's how I got on it anyways on Facebook. And um, yeah, the, the programs chair had posted some, some slots that needed filled. And uh, this particular panel um, popped out for me because I have had the opportunity to speak on this same subject um, twice now at uh, area functions, once at, one at uh, RASA, which is the Western, Western Regional Alcoholics Anonymous Service Assembly, and also at our, our area quarterly. Um, I belong to uh, area BC Yukon Area 79. Um, I'm the DCM, so we talk a lot about... This is a topic that's come up quite a bit um, because for those of you involved in general service, I, I don't know about how it is here. It seems to be the general consensus, but most of those members are older and uh, d- don't necessarily ha- like understand the why we use Facebook the way we do or this this type of social media and uh, and what we understand of it. So you know, being able to to relay that type of information. Um, yeah. So the t- the take that I'm going to take on this is. Um, when we started talking about this it, at area functions is um, this kind of thing really came out to me like the, the we have uh, a piece of literature called Understanding Anonymity and also the AA guidelines on the Internet. Um, a lot of this one specifically is... Uh, in relation to websites, like uh, like Mike was talking about, um, which I personally, I'll admit now, I don't have uh, a lot or really any experience with. Um, I do have experience with traditions, and I do have experience uh, with Facebook being a, a member on Facebook. So just wanted to say before I really start that a lot of this is really just what I got out of here, maybe just some ideas, uh, and I might make, you know, a couple suggestions that, like, my friends and I have kind of come up with um, to kind of try to skirt around trying not to break the traditions as much as possible while still being able to use social media um, to connect with our friends on on, uh, on Facebook or, or other uh, forms and in AA. Um, so I just wanted to say that, like, there's there's some really good stuff in understanding anonymity. I was talking to um, this woman at the beginning about how sometimes it's really easy, for me anyways, to, like, read stuff same thing like in the big book, right? Like I'm reading stuff and it's kind of like foggy and like, or sometimes I'll like get to a line and I'll be like, that line makes sense to me. Like I feel what that line is. To, and then I can like talk it out with someone else and like we can go into like all these stories about where that line has like played a, played a role in my life and this sort of thing. And, but then that same line can be re- read by someone else and mean nothing. You know, or like not have, they might not read it with the same intonation that I'm reading it with, you know, while I'm speaking it in my mind, right? And I find that this is quite similar because like a lot of this language is like, you know, it's, it's quite, it's kind of dry, right? <laughs> Just saying. Um, but there's some stuff, as you can see, I've, I've highlighted some things. Um, the last time I spoke on this, I was actually asked to speak in, in advance. So I, I had a little bit of a chance to kind of prep and just some lines that popped out for me. Um, mostly relating to like why we are anonymous. Um, I don't really have like, solid concrete answers there are ideas about that in this pamphlet but i just want to remind everybody here that this is like alcoholics anonymous right like the our title includes the concept of anonymity right and there are people like even i've been here uh in san francisco for this conference for about a week and i got to meet some people and uh when i was talking to someone about this panel that i'm on he was like well, I don't understand, like, why do we even need anonymity? Like, it's like, it's, you know, it's totally ridiculous. And like, you know, people don't know what's going on. And, and there's actually an article, if anyone's interested, that I, I brought with me. Um, this woman wrote, it's called Challenging the Second A in AA. And uh, I really hate this article. <laughs> but, <laughs> 
but I get, I get her point. The point is, that the argument that she's making is that, like, you know, the, the more we stay in the dark, like, the less, you know, the more um, ignorance there is about AA and the more stigma, you know, that people who aren't members or who don't come here, you know, have ideas. And, like, that's why we remain anonymous because, like, you know, if our bosses or someone in particular finds out, they'll have, like, ideas about what we do and all this. And it's like, you know, all these hypothetical situations. But, um, but again, you know, coming back to the fact that, like, anonymity was put in place in this program for a purpose, right? And that purpose remains the same. Um, so I just like, uh, in talking about anonymity, you know, it says it's the greatest single protection of the, fe- the fellowship has to assure its continued existence and growth. And that's to me like relating to the responsibility statement. For those of you, um, not familiar, the responsibility statement in AA says along the lines of, um, when anyone anywhere reaches out for help, I want the hand of AA to be there. And for that, I am responsible. And sometimes, like, especially for the first, I'm only four years sober now, the first few years of my sobriety, um, I took that as like, I am responsible. Like when, when that person reaches out, I got to shake the hand or I got to do the steps with them or do you know what I mean? Like, and that is part of it. And that's the only way I kind of only saw it one, one, on one plane. But now being a part of general service, I see that like, this is about AA's future, like not necessarily the newcomer that I'm working with today or tomorrow, but like 10 years from now, I want AA to be just as accessible as it was four years ago when I walked into my first meeting, you know, um, and, and anonymity has given AA the opportunity to, to stay that way. Um, just like, you know, I was saying, um, about the steps, right? It's like you've heard it a million times and, you know, none of you, well, maybe some of you know why it works. I personally don't know why it works, but like, you know, I don't know why it works. I know that it works and that I, and that's the only reason why I don't argue with it anymore. Um, same thing with anonymity. I don't really know why it works or how it works, but it, it, it has obviously worked because AA has been around for much longer time than I've been around and it's helped many people that I could, you know, more people than I could imagine, and this sort of thing. So it's like, why are we contesting it sometimes, right? Um, It also says that anonymity is a safeguard often of special importance to newcomers, which is why we are here, right? Like, you know, when we think about anonymity, we usually focus on um, traditional leaven, right? Um, which, for those unfamiliar, is our public relations policy is, oh, sorry, um, 12, well, both. Our public relations policy is based on traction rather than promotion. We need always maintain personal anonymity at the level of press, radio, and film. And anonymity is the spiritual foundation of all our traditions, ever reminding us to place principles of four personalities. But it's also like when we go through the traditions and any time it talks about our primary purpose, that's our primary purpose is like the newcomer, right? Is about like being able to convey this message of recovery to people who are still su- struggling and like hopefully give them an opportunity to see what it is we see or have what it is we have in these rooms. Right. And, um, that is a, a main reason why it comes, you know, it also says like without it, many would never attend their first meeting, right? Like we have to protect the anonymity of the, like a lot of somebody, I think, um, our delegate had said like, if, if their anonymity wasn't like assured in some even small fashion, like most people won't come because they don't know who they're going to see. You know, another line says, um, sorry. Uh, you need not ask them to protect your anonymity. They are there for the same or similar reasons. They will generally respect your privacy and you, you in turn should respect theirs. Right? Like there are a lot of, um, concepts about, anonymity and like how anonymity is played out that we are taught in Alcoholics Anonymous. We may not talk about them all the time, but like the ability to be humble is like massive. You know, we talked about that um, at area about what um, Dave's going to talk about this article he wrote, like how humble am I being posting my cake on Facebook? You know, hey, everybody come fucking see my, sorry, I swear. (laughs) It's recording. Um, (laughs) <laughs> you know, come to my cake and like, oh, look how cool I am with my cake. And it's like, I don't know. And it's like, I'm not trying to judge anybody, you know, but for me, like I try to keep, you know, cause like I have, I have access to all of my friends, not on a public forum also, you know, like I have a cell phone that I can make personal phone calls to. I see a lot of my friends maybe at meetings, you know, and it's like, I don't know that I personally need to post my cake to have everybody attend, you know, or like the people that I want to be there. I, I'm fully capable of like 
making them aware of what day my cake is without having to put it on a public forum, right? Um, you know, also, he touched on it too, like this whole um, public, private, you know, Facebook pages, right? Like, um, it came up at RASA. Um, this one woman, she she stood up in the middle of our discussion about this, and she turned around and she's like, I just realized that I'm not on Facebook, but that does not mean that I'm not on Facebook. Like, she is in photographs of her friends and all this other stuff, right? And it's like, it's about, I think, like, the, the overall conception without getting too nitty-gritty, which I can do so easily, is, like, just the, like, it talked about the respect, right? Like, I am going to respect your maybe or maybe not wanting the world to know that you're an AA, right? Like, if I, you know, just because I have a, a personally, right now, I have a private Facebook status. Like, nobody can see any of my photos or any of my information without being a friend of mine. But I also have friends on my friends list who are not members of AA, you know? And it's like, I don't know that it's fair of me to post a bunch of photos on Facebook about, like, at, like, a sober event, per se, and then, like, you know, my, my friends who aren't in AA aren't stupid. They can, you know, deduce that, like, these all of the people in these photos might also be in AA. And then if they're looking through my photos and be like, hey, Frank, I didn't know Frank was in AA. And then the next time they see Frank, they'll be like, hey, Frank, you were in my friend's photo. And it's like, that's, I don't know, I didn't know that Frank didn't want, I don't know who Frank is, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like the hypothetical Frank. But... <laughs> You know, it's like, I, I have to be not, not even, uh, sorry, I want to change my word from respect to mindfulness. You know, I want to be mindful because I hope that people would be mindful of me, you know, and, and what my, um, desires were. And again, going, what I said in the beginning about this social stigma of AA, right? Um, you know, a lot of people, or you've heard, probably heard mention, like, um, you know, they don't want their boss to find out, like, that's a big thing, right? They don't know if they'll lose their job or something like that, right? And, you know, we in this room, like, know how amazing AA is, right? So that concept to me is ridiculous. Like, my boss knew, like, of course I should be happy, you know? Like, wow, like, how amazing is that? But that's not necessarily so, because, like, they don't know. Not everybody knows. You never know. They might have had, like, a family member who was in AA and, like, you know, and, and we're still a you know, just because we're in AA doesn't make us good people. You know, I know some, <laughs> you know, I know some people who I uh, like, I don't really like in AA, you know, and it's like, not everybody's my friend. And, you know, so it's like, um, yeah, it's like uh, just being mindful of like the other people. And like, I don't have to like go up to you and ask you like, is it okay? If, uh, you know, do you, do you mind anonymity breaking and going, about that is that, like, so it also says in this pamphlet that, like, your personal anonymity is your own to do with. Like, there is nothing in the book and nothing in any of the literature that says, like, you must remain anonymous because for the sake of, of the rest of AA. You can be, and, like, I'm actually quite grateful of, um, for me anyways, like, I'm not, Almost everyone, my boss, everybody knows that I'm an AA. Um, my best friend, uh, who's here at this conference, she worked with a girl a long, long time ago when she first got sober, so like five years ago. And uh, she just like started talking about AA once, I guess. And like that girl is now my sponsee. And like it was years later, it was like three years later, three and a half years later, and like she called Kim, and because they were friends, like she directed her to me, and she's going to take a year soon. You know, and it's like, I, just because she was able to be a little bit open with, like, someone, you know what I mean? And, like, three years later, she was like, hey, are you still in AA? Like, you know, I might have a problem, right? And it might not be immediate. You know, because sometimes I feel like I'm trying to, like, do stuff. You know, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to touch you now. You know, like, I want I want to change you, you know, or something. Or, like, give you the spark that I feel or whatever it is. And, like, that might not happen. But that's what attraction rather than promotion is about. You know, it's sometimes, sometimes it's instant, right? Um... For those of you who have read in the back of the book, uh, it talks about spiritual experience. And uh, spiritual experience, you know, it's, it also says that sometimes it's like an immediate, like, awe moment. And then sometimes it's also of the educational variety, which I am of. <laughs> and it takes quite a while to, like, realize that I've even had a spiritual experience where I'm looking back and I'm like, oh, that's what that was. Like, that's what that was about. This is what I'm feeling now, you know. Um, so it takes time and it takes progress and, and you know, and we should be patient with that, I think. Um, I really like this line, too, that it says, oh, in this one, it says, it is helpful to remember that there is no need to let the speed of technology dictate the speed of our actions, you know. And it's like, I think we forget that, like, 
I don't know about you guys, like, but this has come out because I, I belong to a few uh, different young people's groups, and, like, young people have opinions, <laughs> like, <laughs> a lot of opinions, and, like, I've heard it, you know, everything, like, from we need to change the, the language in the big book, you know, um, because it's, like, not relevant anymore, and people are leaving, you know. There's also another article that I brought here, uh, just to talk about, it, it's not about anonymity, but it's called Fight Over God Splits uh, Greater Toronto Area Alcoholics, and the whole... Um, basis of the article is that there's a group uh, who's not no longer recognized by their area um, change the wording of some of the steps to take out God and I read these things like I'm not going to read them to you if you want to see them after it's it's kind of funny to me like it's like it's like it doesn't even mean the same thing anymore you know and it's like this is a solution like this is to me like a very sacred thing you know like these people have given us this solution that obviously works and like you know and and just because like I have an opinion or like I'm not at the place where like I can just accept things as they are you know because like the, God knows that I, I wasn't always so accepting to new ideas like when I first got here I was like I don't really want to do this but I was broken enough that I did it anyways right despite myself but not everybody stays like that you know and uh it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with a good thing. You know, I don't want to change what's working, right? And, and anonymity works. And it, it, like, we're all in this room. You know, the, the argument about the other, the other article, I forgot, sorry, I'm, I'm kind of scattered, but is about how like, yeah, we remain in the dark. So like, nobody knows about us. And like, it, uh, one of the arguments is that like, more people would come and more people would get sober if there was like more information about it online and like all this stuff. Like one guy is saying like how unfortunate it is when he like was looking up rehabs or something and there was like so little information. He's like so mad about it. And it's like, just go. And then you find out, you know what I mean about it. Like if, and, and that kind of takes away from the whole one alcoholic talking to another. You know what I mean? Like if AA, like if all of AA was just online and you could just read about it, like you could just like sit there in the same four walls that you've been like drinking your life away in and like read about your problem online and then like start making up your own solutions about how you're going to fix your life based on what you've read and then just like never walk into a meeting and never meet another alcoholic and never like discuss it with someone else and never do the steps. You know, and um, I think that's unfortunate. I really do. Um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, just quickly, it says here, oh, yeah, about, you know, preserving, like, what it is that we're here for, right? There's um, there's a line in the service manual. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the service manual, but general service and world service have this. Um, it's now yellow. It's a yellow book. And uh, there's a thing that was read at... Uh, one of the, sorry, like one of the service conferences, like in GS, like in New York at GSO, like long, long time ago, years and years ago. And one of the lines that always chokes me up, so pardon me, is that, you know, I do what I do today because, and I'm going to gut it, to keep that light in the candle lit, or light in the, the candle in the window lit. Uh, it's like for that drunk who's stumbling just a short block away, for the baby, that's born tomorrow, destined for alcoholism. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. It's, um, it, it kills me, you know, that like, that we could, we, we could like argue about anonymity and like just break traditions and everybody like post fucking shit on Facebook because they don't believe that like it really affects anybody or they think that people should just like relax about it or whatever. And then the whole thing slowly breaks down. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like relapse, right? Like you never hear the story where the dude is like, oh, or dude or dudette, I guess, uh, who's like, I was going to meetings and I was working the steps and I was working with sponsees and then I relapsed. You never hear that story. It's always like one thing breaks down and then another thing gives and then another thing gives. I stop answering my phone. I stop doing this. I change my number. I move away. And then I relapse, you know? And it's like, it's the same thing. Like if we're going to argue about this and we're going to like change things and we're going to start like, you know, just like, um, giving up other and other people's anonymity because we don't care about our own, you know, like that's, you know, that's not in um, line with our tradition of unity. Right. And personal or sorry, personal recovery depends on AA unity. I do not get to stay sober on my own without this whole thing being unified together in all of these traditions, 
all 12 of them. Same with the steps. You know, I meet people and they're like, well, I tried the steps and it didn't work. So, you know, but I'm miserable. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, when did you do the steps? And they're like, well, I did like one, two, three, and four. And then I like didn't do it. I'm like, so you didn't do the steps. You know, you didn't do the steps because there are 12 of them. And, you know, and they, we didn't write 12 just because we were bored. You know, like they, they, they're there for a reason, right? And it's a process. And it's the same with the traditions, right? And if we can just, you know, try to, Try to, you know, be open-minded, right? How? Honesty, open-mindedness, and willingness, right? You know, I want to be honest about where I'm coming from. I want to be open-minded to new ideas, and I want to be willing to maybe listen to an opinion that's different than mine. And I can see in a broad spectrum how all of this works and how all of it comes together, and I'm very glad to be a part of that. So thanks. Oh. Let's welcome our third speaker, Dave S. from Oakland, California. Hi, everyone. My name is Dave. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Dave. Hi. We love you, Dave. Lots and lots and lots. And a whole bunch of <laughs> Thanks. Um, I don't know. I had, was thinking about a lot of different things to talk about, and... Um, I don't know. I don't, I guess I just don't really want to talk about the technical stuff so much because, uh, I think that it's important, you know, a lot of the little technicalities of like how to stay anonymous on Facebook and how to not break your friend's anonymity on Facebook without their permission and other social networking websites and all the new ones that are coming out. And I think that that, I think, I really do think that stuff's important. And I, and I, I have to say that I think that it's okay to question these things, like why, why be anonymous, you know, why do the steps, why, you know, I don't, I think it's okay, we shouldn't necessarily take, just take all this stuff at face value, um, it still works, but there's reasons why it works, uh, there's reasons why we're still anonymous, and, you know, this article that uh, Diamond was referring to that was in the New York Times, you know, these people that were, you know, why, why should we stay, you know, in the, why, why do we need to stay in the dark, you know, and that's, and really, you know, we don't want to hide from people, but we're, we're not hiding from people. I mean, you know, we have PI, we have CPC, we have people that are doing this work for us, that are connecting us with the public, you know, we don't, um, we don't need to put our faces all over, you know, all over any media site, really, or anywhere else and say, look at me, I'm sober now, you know. I think it's fine to, to, to do that with your family, you know, to, to talk to your friends about it, um, you know, her experience. I've had experiences like that all the time, you know, where people just sort of know that I'm, you know, I'm in the program uh, and, you know, maybe a few years down the road will contact me and want to go to a meeting. But that's not because I'm out there, you know, just talking all about AA and how great my life is and everything like that. I'm, I'm showing them how great my life has become because of Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, we're walk, people talk about us being walking big books and I think that that, I think that that makes sense. You know, it's really just more important. My, I should let my actions and not my words or my picture or my image or who I am as a person, how much money I have, what I'm, you know, what my profession is. I, I shouldn't, that, none of that stuff matters you know maybe some people will see that but just as many people who see who i am as a person you know and will come to aa just as many or more will see who i am as a person and not want to come to aa because of my political beliefs because of my religious beliefs because you know all that stuff i mean this article about the you know i just this is this really cracked me up actually this guy in toronto they they took I'm not even getting into the argument about changing the steps and whether it's an AA group or not. I mean, I think that for me that's pretty clear. Um, but the fact that this guy, this 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 guy, the father so and so, um, gets up, gets up on the front page of the Toronto Star and has his full picture and a in a cross and a crucifix and Mr. Father so and so and I, he's been in AA for 50 years, you know, like somehow he just because he's been sober that long gives him the right to get, you know, to, to create this class of person that is immune from getting drunk. You know, I've been sober this long. I'm not going to get drunk. Whereas all the newcomers, you know, you guys can't break your anonymity because what if you get, you know, what if you get drunk and, uh, you know, and then everybody thinks AA doesn't work, you know. I mean, I don't think that it's right for us to create classes of alcoholics, you know, where some people can break their anonymity and some people can't um, at the public level. 
Anyways, that, that was maybe a little bit of a side note. Um, I know that we're, that's not really with the digital age, but that was just something that, you know, uh, AA irony or something like that. I think really, I think really the, you know, what this, what this is all about is ego, you know, and my, you know, and my ego and me wanting people to know, you know, that I'm in AA now and that, you know, that my, that, and I think that there's something okay about that, you know, there's, my life is different, I've, my spirit is awake, you know, I'm not the same person that I used to be. All that stuff is really cool, um, but there are so many better ways for me to carry that message to people than, um, than, than by breaking my anonymity at, you know, at the public level. Um, I have to say, you know, I, I wrote this article and I, and, and it's, a, it's an ego thing for me, you know, I mean, I, like, why didn't I just, why didn't I just say at the end, you know, anonymous? Like, they give you the option when you write an, when you write an article for the grapevine, they give you an option to just say, you know, you can have your name as anonymous. But I didn't want to because I wanted people to know, you know? And of course, this is within, this is within AA and like, you know, it's not, it's not like a huge deal and I'm not saying I'm going to get drunk over it, but what I'm saying is this is actually like, for me, it's become a good example of how my, you know, how my ego Really, like, I want to be recognized, you know, I want to be important. And in AA, like, that's, it's BS, you know, that's not what AA is about. AA is not about being important, you know, it's about, it's about just being, you know, uh, whatever they say, like another bozo on the bus, you know, it's just about being another person, another alcoholic. Once again, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who, you know, who I am. When we, when we walk through the doors of AA, you know, none of that stuff matters anymore. We don't care if you're, you know, if you're from Wall Street or, you know, or if, or if you don't have any money at all, if you're homeless. We don't care if you're a doctor. We don't care if you're a lawyer. We don't care about any of that stuff. We don't care what your political beliefs are, your religious beliefs. None of that stuff matters. When you come into Alcoholics Anonymous, we care about having a common problem, which is the disease of alcoholism, and we have, we care about the common solution, which we have found through the 12 steps. And that's the message that we have, you know, because if we, I, I, I guess, if I expand it to outside issues and anything beyond that, I'm going to lose a lot of people, you know. And so, I don't know. I, I know I'm supposed to talk about the digital age, and I, th but, you know, we're in it. You know, we're in the digital age. And I think that really I just want to, I, I want to talk about why this stuff is it, why it's important now? Why it's important to be anonymous now? At the end of the 12 and 12, um, right at the end, it says, you know, moved by. The, it says these experience. Oh, okay. So moved by the spirit of anonymity, we try to give up our natural desires for personal distinction as AA members, both among fellow alcoholics and before the general public. So for me, the lesson is, you know, personal distinction among alcoholics, writing an art, you know, like wanting everybody to know how important I am in AA and how many sponsees I have and how many service positions I have and whatever it is for me, you know, or for you, whatever, you know, that's, that's for me, my personal distinction with NAA, but also everywhere else. And I can do that, you know, I mean, I can do that on Facebook. I could, I can be guilty of doing that with my family, you know, with even, even among my family, when they ask me questions about AA and I want to let them know about how well I'm doing and about how this great stuff that I'm doing, doing in the program. Um, and I think that, you know, they, they wouldn't, these aren't like light words, you know, we are sure that humility expressed by anonymity is the greatest safeguard that Alcoholics Anonymous can ever have. And I think that what Diamond was talking about, you know, this idea that, you know, AA is not guaranteed to continue, you know, AA is not guaranteed to survive. Um, and we found a way, you know, to guarantee its survival, I think. And, and so, each one of us are active guardians of the traditions and therefore active guardians of Alcoholics Anonymous. And if we want AA to survive, it's incumbent on all of us to respect, I think, anonymity. And not just to respect it blindly, but to ask questions about it. You know, we're in this, we're in the digital age, I guess, you know, and so there's a lot of uncharted territory and there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of, um, a lot of, New issues and things that we have to think about, and it's going to be different for different people, you know, and, and I think that 
I guess what I would just ask is that each of us think about it, you know, and each of us sort of try and figure out in our mind what, you know, what, what it means to be anonymous, you know. It, the, there's stuff on the internet that's public. There's stuff on the internet that's private. You know, um, so I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't like to tell. I don't like to tell sponsees what to do. I don't want to tell any any of you what to do either. I have suggestions. I have thoughts. I have ideas, but they're changing also. You know, I don't really know. Um, I just want people to think about it because I want AA to survive. You know, I want it to, I want it to be around in 50 years. And I think that technology, the way, you know, our society has embraced technology and, and it's changing the way that we communicate. It's changing the way that we talk to each other. And I think that we can use it as a tool to help carry the message. But I also think that we can use it as a tool to, you know, to possibly, um, I don't want to sound melodramatic, but we can also use it possibly to destroy AA, you know, if, if we're not, if, if we're not using it right. And so I don't have any answers. Um, but I know that, you know, that when I think about this stuff, I have to think about ego. I have to think about humility. Um, I have to think about, you know, maybe it's just, maybe instead of, you know, instead of carrying the message on Facebook by posting a bunch of stuff on my wall or on my friend's wall or whatever, Maybe it's just, uh, maybe I should just like get involved at, you know, the level of general service or go to my district meeting and see if I can go into a treatment center, you know, and, and, and talk to somebody or, uh, you know, or, or do a PI commitment or something like that. Maybe I can carry the message a little bit better that way because that's what it's about, you know, face, face to face, you know, one on one contact with people. Um, not saying you can't do that online, uh, but I think that for me, I found my, my, you know, the way that I carry the message to be the most effective, you know, when I'm talking to people face to face or at a meeting or whatever. So I guess, I guess that's it. Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks for listening. Thanks you guys. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.